and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 237. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is the fantastic and amazing ranger himself, Tayan Daiga. And the crowd goes wild! <laughs> oh, it's good to be back. Hello. <laughs> I like it. Hey there, how you doing? Fine, how about you, man? I'm doing pretty great. Thank you for asking. Yep. And thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to be on, man. Yeah, I was going to visit the Pope, but I mean, uh, you know, this show came up and I decided, you know what? Got to get down to this. Got to do this. Uh, thanks a lot for <laughs> considering us before the Pope. Yeah, I, he, he can wait, man. Yeah, I'm sure he <laughs> listens to this too, man. Oh, absolutely. He's The Pope, in fact, is the biggest fan of the NPS show. Yeah, is it because of the <laughs> Canadian mafias? There's a strong influence of that, yes, actually. Um, I won't go into too many details, eh? But uh, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I'm still going on the train, you know. Oh, wow. oh funny enough, in a uh, latest review that I did with Silver, um, he was impersonating Little John. <laughs> Is that recorded? Yes, yes. Oh, goodness, I have to see that. Then. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, I was just wondering, like, oh, my God, we need you on. We really, really need I would have you on. For that. that would have been perfect. I would have fit right in. I know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, still, but still. With that aside, I do hope that you can come on for another review show, another show in general. But um, how have you been, man? I've been pretty good, you know. Of course, very busy. Uh, this is, of course, right during the thick of the midterm season for any students out there. I might have sent uh, fear down your spine. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's been pretty good. I've been trying to get a lot of work done. And I have been getting a lot of work done. So I think for the most part, things are going smoothly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I do remember that you have, well, a few new videos out at the same time, too. Absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, I, you stay new. <laughs> Once a month I upload. So I uh, do have a new video out on evil and villains and how to make a good villain. So that was a good one, and people seem to be liking that. But for the most part, yeah, that's that's about it in the past, like, month. <laughs> <laughs> well, when this comes out, it's going to be in November. So people are expecting a new one to come out soon. You have one ready, right? No. <laughs> okay. Of course. What, what, me having a video ready? What kind of a world is this? <laughs> it doesn't work like that here. Well, we are content creators, so there's a supply and demand. Absolutely. Yeah. And talking about supply and demand, uh, a while back, uh, Integrity Toys had their well, exclusive quote-unquote um, action, I won't say action figure, they're dolls, like they're high-end expensive dolls. Hey. Action figures, Norman. Action figures. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, quote unquote action figures. They're really high end action figures and whatnot. And they look, well, if you're a collector, this is something that you would be interested in. I think they were selling them off for, um, I think it's 100 a piece or 50 a buck. A piece. $100 a piece. Yeah, I'm not 100% <laughs> sure, but it's one of those things where it's a really, really expensive kind of toys. It seems that they have been doing a reprint of set toys and they're, um, well, selling. They're, they're having, uh, they're redoing it and they're reselling it on their website so you can get them at their store. Um, the funny thing is right now I am on their store and clicking on said link on the Equestria Daily site does not seem to pop up. <laughs> Integrity Toys, close for maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what timing? <laughs> I know. Uh, nonetheless, I mean, they look pretty good. Like, they're obviously very high quality things. Um, of course, they're probably more for very niche collectors. I don't see the average fan going for something like this but they look like they're in good quality and if you want to get your hands on one of these things i recommend you do they look pretty good mm -hmm. look very fashionable oh mm. yeah that, that's the <laughs> that's the thing with this kind of dolls or action figures is that they're more to the designer market instead of your uh, barbie kind of dolls or even the question girls dolls because um yeah. this has well let's just say that they have a doll of john travolta and um, I forgot the girl who plays alongside John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. So, yeah, they have that. So, it's really all over the place. 
I like how uh, Rarity's uh, doll has like these sort of like very old person slippers on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you notice, like yeah, yeah. you'd think they'd be wearing shoes, but then it's like no, there's just like these like grandma slippers on. <laughs> I think that I just thought that a little hilarious. I wanted to point that out. Yeah, but um, <laughs> you're you're just um seeing what they have on EQD. But if you take a look see at our previous show, they have the home in six, and I have to point out that there's only four male dolls and two female dolls. And the four male dolls are Rarity, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, and Pinkie Pie. And only Fluttershy and Twilight are the female dolls. There's no balance in um, gender. Like, you would think that Pinkie Pie would be a female, but no, they had to make a male doll. So yeah. I'm surprised they went that route, actually. It's kind of odd. Um, I must, there must be some reasoning behind it. Or, or maybe there isn't. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but still, it's it's interesting. So very very niche niche toys. True, true. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, I'm looking at the gem and the hologram dolls, and you know what? They look good. Seriously, they look good. <laughs> well, okay, you're not clicking on it, are you? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're clicking because okay. it says that the website's down for maintenance. No, no, no. There's also a click uh, here button to go to their website. Okay. Okay, you know what? Uh, the speedy yeah. way is just for me to tell you that, okay, there's a link in the show notes, sorry, in the Skype chat. Uh, go click on that. I, I got it. Uh, I, I clicked on it. Yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, wow. You can, you can look at the detail in work they put into said product and, wow, they're really good. They are. Absolutely. And if you click on the last button there, you can see a male doll and he looks like David Bowie. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> anyway, b- besides that, uh, if you're interested, it's there on the website. I hope it's for sale. If not, this sh- news is way out the window. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so anyway, I'm um, talking about Equestria Girls. Have you watched it yet? The new one, uh, Legend of the Free. I haven't, admittedly, I haven't. Um, it, the funny thing with that video, I believe it came out like a week earlier than it should have because there was like a release in Brazil or something yeah. that was in English. Yeah. So everyone was getting their hands on it. Uh, I never actually got a chance to see it. Uh, but of course, if you haven't got a chance to see it like myself, you'll get a chance to see it now because they're releasing the Blu-ray and DVD sets on Amazon. Yep, yep. And if you're like, Rob, you haven't watched it yet, you can buy it on the, what you call this? Uh, Amazon, DVD stores, or uh, whatever it is, iTunes probably. But yeah, is there available for you to buy? Um, Amazon Video sells it at four bucks to ten bucks. I got no idea what's the difference. I don't use Amazon that much. See, I don't use it either, but I have a feeling it has something to do with like the quality or something, or maybe there's a set or something like certain packages that you can get. I don't know. Uh, but you can get it for Blu-ray for about seventeen ninety-six, so about eighteen dollars. DVD for about five, and multi-format, whatever that means, for about sixteen dollars. I recently asked Silver because he showed me a picture of him buying an anime DVD, and I noticed that it's a combo pack. It's Blu-ray plus DVD, and I was asking him, um, Silver, why is said show having two things? Like, what's the other thing? And he just say, oh. It's just the same video but different formats just because. Okay. Well, I mean, and I can see why you would do that too because let's say you have like a laptop or something. It's got a disk drive but it only supports DVD. But then maybe you want to play it on like your PlayStation or something which may support Blu-ray. And of course, you know, we all know Blu-ray is a little bit better than DVD. So it depends on what devices you have. And I guess if you buy the box set and you want to watch it on different devices, I guess that gives you that option. Or as a quick gift option to somebody else. Here, take the DVD set. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. I'll keep the Blu-ray. And looking through Amazon, yeah, I, I see that the multiple format is a Blu-ray and DVD combo. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's just, you know, some people want both, right? Some people want to have access to both formats uh, for whatever reason. I think it's mostly just a device thing. So maybe you only have a DVD player, but maybe you're, at your friend's house they have a Blu-ray player or something. So it kind of gives you that option. Um, and of course, it's not exactly a lot more expensive than. In fact, it's, the multi format is cheaper than the Blu ray. Yeah, but uh, honestly, I would just say go get the Blu ray, even though if it's, what, three bucks more, but you'll get that quality in video and audio. And the bonus content is going to be, well, clearer. Uh, honestly, I got no idea. I just like things to be more shiny. 
That's me. I, you know what? I've never seen the difference between Blu-ray and DVD. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I personally don't see the difference, but I guess there is. There is, there is. Like, people who sit in front of their computers all day long will notice it. Uh, but people like, uh, casuals, they don't really mind it as long as the show... Filthy casuals. <laughs> I would say that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, one more thing I need to point out. Um, this includes the bloopers, sing-along, and the usual things you come to expect from pony releases. So yeah, expect a lot of good things. Um, they started to do this since the third Echo Share Girl movie, um, where they include bloopers, and yeah, wow... <laughs> That's very meta. I will say the bloopers are actually pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. um, so definitely worth checking those out if you ever get a chance. They are yeah. quite hilarious. Yeah, and delete the scenes. Like if you remember uh, the Friendship Games, that one with the bloopers and deleted scenes, they're worth it. Like especially the deleted scene where uh, there's, there's a duet between Twilight and Sunset. That was just awesome. It was beautiful. Yes, I know. <laughs> it was something else. It was beautiful. I oh. know. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, on to the next news from uh, TV movie to the big screen. Absolutely. The silver screen. Yep. Are you excited for the 2017 movie? Certainly am. It looks to be... I actually... You know what? I haven't heard a lot about it. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of news on it just yet, but for the most part, it looks to be like it's going to be one of those really, really, really big ones. Oh, yeah. So... And one, certainly one to wor- like worth checking out. So oh, yeah. definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. Hasbro has been treating this uh, title or this product... Oh, sorry. Hasbro has been treating this title as an triple A... Um, IP or triple A release because the stars, okay, granted the stars are not top tier stars. Um, do you remember Wolverine X-Men Origins, the guy who played Sabretooth? Uh, yes, I think I do actually. Levy something. He's going no, to I play the, the name. <laughs> yeah, but he's going to play the bad guy for the movie. Okay. And nice. there's a, I, sorry, there's a pop singer named Sai. Or yeah, seems something I don't remember. She's going to play a character in this movie, and remember Ant Man. Uh, do you remember his friend, the Hispanic guy who had that memorable scene where he was retelling or recapping stories from point of view? Absolutely. Yeah, he's going to be in the movie too. Well, there you go. Look at all these the star-studded lineup, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, we can't remember their names. <laughs> <laughs> but they've been in other things, so yeah. it, it should be a good one, I think. I think it's going to be one of those ones that uh, the fandom really does rally behind, and it's going to be one of the positives. Um, I don't think there'll be a lot of complaints from it. I can't wait to go watch it, because this is one of those things where we have been in the fandom for how many years now? I'm just going to say seven years, or six to seven years, and we have been excited. The moment when they mentioned Equestria Girls, the movie, we were already hyped. Like, there were theater showings all around the states and part of, some part of Canada. And we were, well, for most part, we were really excited for it. And once we saw it, like, oh wow, um, if I did remember, the first Equestria Girls movie got a lot of, well, money back on return for Hasbro to do another one and so on. And, well, Mm -hmm. with Hasbro getting their own studio, I think their own studio is called All Spark Studio. So they're doing this movie, like they're treating this IP properly. With any other IP, they are having books. You know how some movies have um, paperback novel books? Absolutely. Yep. But instead of doing something generic like that... They're going to do a prequel movie book. Yay. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so, um, what does this thing have or the quote unquote key selling point? Um, well, <laughs> uh, let's just say that it's a book setting up the events before the movie happens. So, um, from what I can tell on the website, uh, Little Brown Books, uh, it says, get the story that leads up to the cinematic event of the year for the new My Little Pony paper overboard series starring fan favorite Twilight Sparkle and her friends across Equestria. That's <laughs> what it says. <laughs> 
I'm kind of confused, though, and here's the reason why. I don't know about most movies. Mm -hmm. I don't watch a lot of movies, but when I do, I don't (laughs) usually have to buy a book to understand the prequel and understand the events leading up to it. So for this movie, are we going to have to read this book to understand what's going on? Or, you you know what I mean? Like, is is there going to be something we have to read beforehand? How would that work? Then... You know, I'm kind of confused about this. Why are they selling it like this? Um, honestly, this is a marketing strategy. Is get the hype before the movie comes out because if I do remember right, the movie has been slated to come out somewhere around April. Don't quote me on this. I'm not 100% sure. But this book is going to be sold on August 1st, 2017. So it's one of the way to hype people up or something like that. I could be wrong on the date of said movie coming out. But, well, yeah, because then that would be after, so the, the book would come yeah. out after the movie. Yeah. But um, in all honesty, it's a good marketing strategy, uh, get people hyped for the movie by the book, but you don't really need the book to understand what's going on. Like any other movie, it would be a good supplement for the movie. Like, you can watch the movie without reading the book, you won't lose anything, but if you do read the book, you're going to get more out of it. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I can't wait. Should be good. Oh, it says here October 6, 2017. So, yay! We got a date. <laughs> it's literally like a year from now. <laughs> yay, I can't wait. <laughs> Put that on the calendar. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, but talking about putting things on the calendar, are you still waiting for Two Snacks' new video for Two Best Sister little... Plays? <laughs> when is the last one that he put out? Uh, I'd have to check. It's been a long while, but I can go check right now. Oh, wow. Um, Oh, geez. So, yeah, the last one has been about two years ago or so, probably longer. Oh, wow. So it's been a long time. Yeah. And honestly, Two Snacks... How do I put this? Two Snacks... Okay, I don't personally know the guy, but I do know that he's a really, really busy fella. Must be. Mm -hmm. I mean... And you know what? He's going to a con. Yeah! Yeah! Is he? <laughs> Bro, I remember. Yeah. Well, according to Equestria Daily, he's not. What? And apparently, pe- well, apparently, people have been impostering him. It's a shame. Oh wait, wait, wait! This, this is news to me. Could you explain <laughs> it? Uh, what's going on? I, I love the sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put it up anymore. I can't hold it together. <laughs> So yeah, apparently the creator Two Snacks has been impostered at, at least from what we can tell, at multiple conventions. And people trying to say that they're in fact him, and he's gone on publicly to say that no, he's not, he's never been to a convention, nor does he even live in the United States, which of course a lot of conventions end up being in. Mm -hmm. So, who's been impostering him? (laughs) I don't know. But in all honesty, um, from what I know about Two Snacks is that he's Brazilian. Oh, he's Brazilian. Yeah. Okay. And the I don't only... know if they have a lot of conventions down there. <laughs> I don't know. The only reason why I know he's Brazilian is because of Two Best Friends Play or the Zaibatsu. Um, they've been talking a lot about, well, their animators like um, Two Snacks, Plague of Gripes, and so on. And, well, from what they say that, well, Two Snacks is working on their videos, the title intro videos or whatever it is. So he has no time. Oh, so he he's oh okay. So he's actually got work with them then, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's really cool. I like that. That's a good good story. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, positive. Well, at least it's an explanation of why Two Snack hasn't been releasing any um, pony videos in a while. Yeah, and it, it, honestly, when it comes to animators and, and what pays and what makes them money and and all that and what puts food on the table, sometimes you do have to go for the jobs that will do that instead of perhaps the more fun jobs. But then again, I'm sure he has fun nonetheless. Oh, he or yeah, she, yeah. Do, I don't really know the gender. But yeah, anyway. that's true too. I don't know if he, it's a he or she. We all we'll use the term they. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I just use the reading two stack. I'm sure we can find out if we just click on his Deviant Art or YouTube or wherever he is. Maybe Patreon. He maybe he has a Patreon. But still, um, two snacks is well. <laughs> let's just say that uh, he's not at your local convention unless it's in Brazil. Uh, then you really need to wonder if he's really two snacks or not. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I think that's a, I don't know, you don't really hear about that too often, do you, where um, people claim to be somebody else? Of course, I imagine that would be an unfortunate situation because the con staff then have, like, are, you know, when it comes to people of someone's status like Two Snacks going to a convention, the people at the convention are going to try to run things like panels or or try to accommodate them to the best they can mm -hmm. um, to try to make them happy and, and to try to, you know, allow fans a chance to meet them and, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, when you have people impersonating them, then it just becomes a wish wash of what's going on, how do we fix this, and it becomes a big issue. Yeah. Um, so hopefully this is a very isolated incident. Although from the post here it says that it uses plural like conventions, treatment at conventions, and uses a lot of plural adjectives and, and verbs and whatnot. So I'm guessing it's probably happened more than once. Um, but it's just a good warning. It's it's a really good warning in general for anyone running a convention, uh, just to you know make sure you confirm that the people that you're talking to and you're inviting to the conventions are in fact the right people. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, having not worked for a convention, but having been involved with a convention in terms of helping in the background for a bit, like nothing too serious, just helping um, the con staff move here, selling stuff and whatnot. It's not an easy thing. You need to do a lot of um, work and the effort that these people, uh, these con people do to get said convention up and running is not easy. And having this quote-unquote impersonator going to a convention, um, I'm not saying the two snack impersonator, but in general, anybody, is kind of a headache. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a lot of preparation when it comes to conventions. There's a lot going on. From what I hear, it is not easy work. So uh, definitely, if you're thinking about impersonating somebody, please don't. You're not going to get anything out of it. it. It leads to just nothing but confusion and a little bit of a headache. So oh, true. don't do it. <laughs> true. From and, all of us here. <laughs> yeah, and true. And well, uh, I think it's best that we move this discussion to the MBS show's newest topic. And said topic is... Thoughts on the matter. And thoughts on the matter is impersonation. Why? <laughs> why do you even well, begin with this? Like, why? What's the reason? Well, I think when it comes to impersonating others, uh, you probably aren't going to impersonate, uh, you know, random sh Joe schmuck across the street. Mm. But you're probably going to try to impersonate people that you look up to or that you're a big fan of. So, uh, of course, in, in from the post here, it kind of directs right to it. Uh, Two Snacks, obviously, being a very, very popular animator in the community, um, or at least has been in the community. We'll hopefully see your new videos soon. Uh, people want to be like them, right? And, and that's natural. You want to be like them. Wouldn't you love to have that ability and, and to be you know loved on that kind of level? That'd be awesome. So some people try to inherit that in the worst way possible by impersonating them, by using their usernames and, and, and everything and their details and their information. And they try to play it off as themselves. It's just – it's stupid though. Well, <laughs> it makes me mad. I do remember um, a YouTuber by the name of Gaijin Goomba. He had this oh, yeah. video up a while back asking for help about his identity on Instagram because, well, Gaijin Goomba here has an, sorry, Gaijin Goomba has never had an Instagram account and to his surprise, someone created a Gaijin Goomba account using his name, his mm -hmm. icons and whatsoever. And yeah, Gaijin Goomba asked that person to take it down and well, he didn't. He, mm -hmm. Go Goomba here went to the people at Instagram asking to do something about it, and they didn't because, well, uh, the real guy doing Goomba just started Instagram, and the imposter had started a long while. So Instagram is going to automatically think that the new one is the fake. Yeah, and it becomes such a weird situation because especially if you're, you know, a popular YouTuber or you, you do something and you're, you're pretty big. And let's say, like, for example, let's pretend that I became, like, super famous. But I, I don't use Twitter, for example. And, mm. and let's say one day, you know, after all of it, I decide, you know what, I'm going to make a Twitter account. Then I go to Twitter and I find, whoa. First of all, I'm not on it, but I see that there's tons of people using my namesake 
on Twitter. And I, I imagine in his situation, that must have felt extremely just weird. First of all, it, he probably thought at first it was sort of like a fan account. And that happens, of course. Mm-hmm. So again, like fan club accounts, which is, of course, I think in my opinion, perfectly fine. As long as they, you know, don't break silly rules, it's fine. The problem is when they take that step further and they try to be them and they try to impersonate them and they try to act as if they're them. Mm-hmm. And it becomes a big issue because you may not agree with what they say as the content creator, but they're saying it and people believe that that's you. Mm. It becomes a bit of an issue. There are certain situations where this is okay. Um, for example, uh, Kaz- Kazuhirai. K- Kazuhirai. I, I think that's how you say his name. Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> I'm just trying to get it right. But Kazurai, yeah. the CEO of Sony PlayStation, the gaming department, uh, I'm sure that he doesn't really have a Twitter account, but someone made an account for him. And it stated out from the very beginning, it's uh, Kaz, this is a parody account where yeah. uh, this is just for comedy and just, just for comedy because, well, <laughs> come on. Uh, a CEO tweeting about, oh, our newest invention, the PlayStation VR, is awesome. You can do a lot of things and posting a funny cat pic down there. So it's like, ha, ha, very funny. Uh, not- and I see, th- that's the thing though, like when it comes to parody accounts, I think that's perfectly fine. If it's done in parody, if it's done as light humor and it's clearly stated that this is a parody account, what the words being said here do not reflect the actions and words of the person we're trying to parody, mm. then I think that's perfectly fine. Oh yeah, I mean, in certain contexts, that's um, okay and all, but when you're taking it a bit too far as in terms of I'm impersonating Silver Quill. Yes, I am Silver Quill. I am the Griffin. Sorry, a uh, Hippogriff person. Yeah, you love me, right? Come on. Send love to me. Send money on my Patreon, which is fake Silver Quill. One, two, three. I can just imagine you with like an East European accent trying to pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, huh? I'm Silver Quill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, uh, that, that's not good. That's not good. And- no, it's not. And what what I don't understand, uh, and I mean, of course, I, I can see – you can sort of see why people would do this because they want a, a taste of what it would be like. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, I can get that. But at the same time, like what are you expecting to get out of it? Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's you know? true. I mean, here's the thing. Um, maybe I don't I, – maybe I won't get it, but wouldn't it be awesome to gain popularity on your own merits? Exactly. And I think that's the the biggest thing to to get out of it is that, you know, sure, if you want to gain popularity off, like off of somebody else, fine enough. But if you're impersonating them, that's not at the same time, that's not really you gaining any popularity. That's them getting popularity. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's very it's a very tough situation. It doesn't happen a lot either. It, it, it they it doesn't happen like too often, and I, you don't hear about it all that often either. Mm. Uh, I guess that these days a lot of content creators they kind of when they're starting off and before they're even anywhere near popular, they'll scoop up all of their uh, social media accounts on things like Twitter, Facebook, you know the popular mm-hmm. ones, and they'll just claim those accounts, and that'll be that. And if they're late to the game, you know you usually don't hear about people impersonating, but for the most part. Yeah, it sucks when it does happen, but then again, at the same time, you don't hear about it happening too often, so which is good, of course. Yeah, and for this fandom that we have, it's rare to hear impersonators. Well, I have heard um, a few cases, and I think Two Snacks is the second one I've heard of uh, impersonators, but in all honesty, why would you want to do that? Like, this also gives a bad reputation to the person that's being impersonated, which is, for example, two snacks here, because he even stated out that, okay, if if someone sends a message to him and saying, yay, two snacks, remember me, we hang out at XCon, and he says like, nah, man, i never been to a con. It's like, wouldn't that feel bad? And wouldn't that make two snacks look like a jerk? Well, I don't think it'd make him look like a jerk because he's not. And if he explains himself saying, I've never been to a con, and then he says, well, I guess that must have been somebody else, then it doesn't make him look bad. But I can certainly see where you're getting at. If that person who's impersonating them 
says bad things or says things that the original content creator just would not agree with or just would not say, hmm. uh, then it become like, for example, it could be like, imagine someone was impersonating Dr. Wolf, but this guy was like, you know, swearing and like saying all these really bad things, like just nothing what he would say, uh, but you know, it, it makes him look bad then in that sense. Yeah. Of course, it really comes down to the people and they have to realize that at the end of the day, I mean, as the people, as in the audience, uh, the people who are following these impersonators or at least finding these impersonators impersonators they have to make that decision for themselves and they have to be a little more careful and they have to see truly if this person that they think they are mm. is the person that they think they are yeah true that and at the same time too people like dr wolf or silver quill here has shown their face and we have heard their voice so it's a bit harder exactly. to impersonate them but people like two snacks here it's a bit difficult because we have not hear his voice we got no idea how he sounds like well, that's the thing. We and we don't even know like if it's a he, if it's a her. We don't. We have no idea. So I think when it, when it comes to someone like a content creator like Two Snacks, where they're not very public, they keep themselves their actual personalities in real life a little more reserved, a little more to themselves, not public. <clears throat> then that sets yourself up more for impersonation. And I think going back to when you mentioned uh, what was it, Gaijin Goomba or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I can't say that name properly. I, th- I, f- I like to think I can, but I can't. <laughs> um, but for him as well, right? He uh, he masks his voice. In his videos, he uh, he changes the pitch of his voice so it sounds like more high pitched and it's different. It's not his actual voice. So for there, you can start to see, oh well, okay, he's also someone who would be more vulnerable to being impersonated. Well, now, of course, he has shown in video his face, his own voice. I've seen them, so I can confirm. <laughs> but at the same time, most of his videos, the ones that are the most popular and the ones that the people are going to see the most are the ones where his voice is altered and he doesn't show his face. Well, I think he's changed that um, motto of his now to do more um, real voice and more faces format. So, oh, uh, he? yeah, he, yeah, he's... <laughs> I mean, th- then again, when this when this impersonation thing came out, I think this was a while back. Yeah. This was well, so uh, I think it's around August or something. Like that. I mean, it's kind of recent, but still, um, I do hope for the best for him. But still, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but still, but uh, on this matter, um, it's best not to impersonate. Um, emulate is okay, but impersonate is never a good idea. Yeah, I mean, get inspired from the people that you enjoy and the people you look up to, but, you know, don't go as far as taking their name and pretending to be them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I would have to say that, unless you're doing a wrestling gimmick where you're impersonating a wrestler. So, yeah, that could work. Fair enough. (laughs) Uh, Anywho, um, that's the news for this week, and that's a news topic. Uh, I hope you guys had an interesting time talking to us or sharing your opinion about us on said topic because well we had fun we had fun we want to know what you have to say oh yeah and (laughs) you can send those well opinions or questions concerns or suggestions for the show at the mbs show gmail.com you can also reach us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at the mbs show and my personal twitter account is at norman sanzo and ty we can reach you man well, you can always reach me at youtube.com slash tyandega, where I post hilarious videos on how to make characters and um, on other things that's going on in the community. You can also find me on DeviantArt at Tyandega Art, all one word, or at DeviantArt, and you can search that up and you'll find me, and I make some little pieces of artwork here and there. Not often, but I think they're cute. And as well, you can also find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Tyandega MLP, all one word again. Uh, and that's where I am. Also, I do live streams on Picardo TV, Picardo TV slash Ty and Dega. Awesome, awesome. Hilarious. <laughs> I've been there. And the water incident was funny. I, I've, you know, you can't cry over spilt water. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, what so they say. true. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we do have a Facebook page. And you can catch us, and you can catch us on BonnieVlive.com. Links are in the show notes. And also, we have the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Please subscribe to us over there too. On that podcast specifically, we review the MLP comics, the MLP movies and episodes, and also some of the random things. Uh, I think the last movie we did that was not pony related was 
uh, Batman the Killing Joke with Bat Munchkin. And who knows, maybe the next movie review or review or discussion that we have could be with Rob about something. Rob, what would you like to talk <laughs> about, about? something, the movie, <laughs> coming to theaters this fall. Yeah, but Rob, what do you like to talk about? Like, what's your topic in mind? What, what, what do you like to talk about? The hot button topic. Video games. Oh, mm. Okay, video games. Mm. That is something to look <laughs> forward to. I do believe Silver Quill plays the video games. So, yeah. He does? Yeah, oh, yeah. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Believe it or not, <laughs> he plays the Destiny video game. Uh, oh, oh, he's one of them. Oh, <laughs> well, Jack <that> case. <laughs> In that case. <laughs> but anyway, um, maybe we can do something with you uh, there. Hi, um, who knows? Uh, a video game talk about video games. Who knows, right? That'll be fun. What a fun. Yep. But anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Diane Dega. And we'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the NBS show. See ya. Good time, guys.